14 ساله مدت سه سال می شود که ورتش اسکیت را پیش می برم قبل از اینکه اسکیت پارک بیایم مدام اسکیت اسکیت می کنم آزادی میکنم من برای آینده در افغانستان میخواهم آزادی و یا صلح باشم Live from the Zoom Studios, the 17 and Me Show, starring Ambassador Jeff Rivero, inviting you to join our special guest, Oliver Persevich from Skatistan. And here we go! Welcome to the 17 and Me Show, sponsored by the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Our special guest tonight is a friend of mine, Oliver Persevich, who is the founder and executive director of Skatistan. They go around the world opening up schools in war torn countries, and they connect first with students through skateboarding. Speaking of skateboarding, which animal would make the best skateboarding coach? Frogs. They're always going, rip it, rip it. <laughs> Why don't skaters watch the Flintstones? They hate pebbles. <laughs> What's the hardest thing in skateboarding? The concrete. Whoa, that's the last time I let you guys in for free. And finally, what are the most common last words of a skater? Watch this, dude. <laughs> We're going to have a great show tonight. Oliver Persevich is coming up. But first, let's have a commercial from our sponsors, United Nations. We can be. We must be. The first generation to end extreme poverty. The generation most determined to fight injustice and inequalities. The generation that saves the planet from climate change. And this is how it will get done. The global goals. A 15-year plan for everyone, everywhere. With no one left behind. We, we will live in a world where nobody anywhere lives in extreme poverty. Where no one goes hungry. Where no one wakes in the morning asking if there will be food today. We will live in a world where no child has to die from diseases we know how to cure. And where proper health care is a lifelong right for us all. We will live in a world where everyone goes to school. And education gives us the knowledge and skills for a fulfilling life. We will live in a world where all girls and all women have equal opportunities to thrive and be powerful and safe. We cannot succeed if half the world is held back. We will live in a world where all people can get clean water and proper toilets at home, at school, and at work. We will live in a world where there is sustainable energy for everyone, heat, light, and power for the whole planet without destroying the planet. We will live in a world where economies prosper. A new wealth leads to decent jobs for everyone. And we will live in a world where our industry our infrastructure and our best innovations are not just used to make money, but to all make all our lives, lives better. We will live in a world where prejudices and extremes of inequality are defeated. Inside our countries and between different countries. Where people live in cities and communities that are safe and progressive and support everyone who lives there. Where we replace what we consume. Planet where we put back what we take out of the earth. 
We live in a world that is decisively rolling back. The threat of climate change. Where we restore and protect the, the life, life in, in our, our oceans, oceans and, and seas. <laughs> we'll restore and protect life on land. The forests, animals, the earth itself. With peace between and inside countries. Where all governments are open. An answer to us for what they do at home and abroad. And the justice rules. With everyone equal before the law. We're all countries and we their people. Work together. In partnerships of all kinds. To make these local goals a reality for everyone, everywhere. These are the United Nations global goals for sustainable development. Let's, Let's get, get to, to work. work. Let's make it happen. really excited to start tonight's show. A friend of mine, Oliver Persovich from Skatistan is here. I'm really looking forward to asking him about updates on all the schools around the world. Oliver, welcome to our show tonight. How are you doing? I'm doing really well, thank you. Great to be here. Can you tell us a little bit about your background that led you to the passion to start Skatistan? Sure. So I was born in Australia, in Melbourne, and uh, my mum's German and my father was uh, born in what's now Croatia. And uh, so European parents born in Australia. Uh, I got a skateboard just before my sixth birthday. And uh, just before my sixth birthday, we also uh, moved to Papua New Guinea. And so I did my primary school years in, in Papua New Guinea. Uh, in, um, so that was absolutely fascinating at an international school in Ley and also in Mount Hagen in the Highlands. And uh, yeah, then back to, back to Australia, finished, uh, finished high school, uh, went to um, live with my grandmother in Germany for a year and then went back to Australia and uh, started university and I studied chemistry. I've got a first class honours degree in, in chemistry and uh, had a big interest in environmental science. So that was the, that was the track that I was taking. Um, but then, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's a little bit, a little bit about me and uh, that those travels. So, so skateboarding has been something that's been part of my life since I was, yeah, around six years old. I'm 46 now. So it's 40 years on a, on a skateboard. And um, that's, uh, that, that's been a really central, important thing. I've been interested in lots of different things, but uh, skateboarding has always been there and I've always seen myself as a, as a skateboarder. Uh, your project Skaterstan is amazing. Would you mind giving us a little bit more detail on how it affects the children's lives? Sure. So in, in 2007, um, my, my girlfriend at the time got a job in Kabul, Afghanistan. And I went to Afghanistan looking for a, looking for a job myself and because I'd worked in, in research. I'd worked at a university for, for quite some time in, in Australia as well. I was uh, trying, to get a, trying to get a research based, based job there. And of course, being a skateboarder, I brought, uh, I brought my skateboard along. And uh, I thought the skateboard could be a way of meeting people and making friends in Afghanistan for me to share something about who I am and what I like. And sure enough, that was, that was what, exactly what happened when I went and skateboarded on the streets of Kabul. Uh, young, young children and youth were very, very interested in, in what, what it was. They were, they were totally fascinated with the, with the skateboard. And I, I saw it as a great way to connect with, connect with children. Really interesting statistic about Afghanistan is that half of the population is under the age of 15. So a really, really 
enormous youth population. So the adults have been killed in either war over the last or also um, simply dying at, a, at an early age. The, the average, um, not so long ago, um, the life expectancy in Afghanistan was only 40, 42 years for, for, uh, for men and about 45 for women. So you've got this really, really young, young population that have had what I, I notice not so many opportunities uh, there were limited opportunities for, for schooling. There were limited opportunities for, for jobs. But I also saw that um, demographic, those young people, as the potential for change and the future of the country. And when I uh, was able to create some connections with the, with the youth through the skateboard, I got very excited because it was like, hey, this is the 50% that really matter that, uh, that I, I'm, I'm engaging with. And I, I ran these little skateboard sessions and I gave, because girls don't have as many opportunities as boys in Afghanistan, I gave the girls double the amount of time on the skateboard. And of course, when you've got more opportunity, it uh, produces results. The girls all then became, of course, better skateboarders than the boys. And people started to talk about this sport for girls in Afghanistan. So there are a lot of um, limitations for, um, for girls to do sport because if they try to play soccer or ride a bicycle or um, play volleyball or fly a kite or do any of the popular sports that boys do, they're told that they can't do it because their activities only for boys. And the advantage that I had was skateboarding was so new that there were no social rules around it about girls not being able to do it because nobody had seen it before. And because the girls were better than the boys, it actually became this girls, girls sport. And I, I saw an opportunity there. And uh, the more that I got to... Um, the, the more that I got to know the, the story of uh, the stories of these children, um, they expressed to me that they wanted to go to school. And for a lot of them, they didn't have the ability to do so. They were working, they'd been working on the streets of Kabul since they were six or seven, very, very young. Um, and they just, their parents never um, prioritized education for them. And for the children that did go to school, school would only go for two hours a day. Sometimes the teacher wouldn't turn up. A lot of the time children were hit in, at, at school. And a lot of the lessons were based on rote learning. So simply copying what the teacher is saying, um, uh, repeating something over and over again. And... This is uh, that that to me was a big problem. If this if this fifty percent of the population that was under fifteen, if they were going to inherit the problems um, that they were going to inherit when they when they grew up, they needed a quality education. They needed sustainable development goal number four. They it it had to quality education was the key to engaging this. Uh, the, the, the potential of the youth to change the future of, of Afghanistan. And when I didn't see quality education there, I tried to work out what could I possibly do. And uh, I didn't have very many uh, resources. I was living on about 20 US dollars a week at the time in, in Kabul, just sort of scraping by and uh, going, to the, going to the market at closing time to bargain on some potatoes or onions or whatever else I could afford for a couple of dollars. And, um, but I did have some, I did have some ideas and I, I shopped those ideas around and I got the, I got the um, president of the Olympic committee in Afghanistan to uh, put aside a piece of land. Um, I, I convinced a couple of different uh, governments to get involved. So Norway and Germany and um, Denmark, the, the, these, these governments saw uh, the embassies there, saw a lot of value in what I was doing in terms of trying to engage youth and create opportunities for, for girls. 
And uh, together with the, the land from the Olympic Committee, uh, in 2009, we built the largest um, indoor sports and education facility for for young people in the in the country, and that was that was opened in in October 2009. And uh, the idea was to use skateboarding as a hook, uh, have half of the spaces open for open for girls, and and half for boys, and to uh, really focus on quality education in the in the classroom and uh, develop critical thinking skills, uh, explore issues that were important to the, to the children, um, things that they wanted to solve. And it was, and, and we did a lot of that through, uh, especially using art as a medium, because um, a lot of children didn't actually have uh, the ability to read or write. And so we needed to find something, an activity that all of the kids could do straight away, and um, that was that was really interesting. And they 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 said, "Hey, we're we're worried. I'm worried about uh, a family member that um, might be forced to marry, um, and she's very young still, and she doesn't want to do it." They talked about people um, taking bribes in uh, to simply when a, if there's a traffic accident or something, something wrong going on. They talked about uh, the, the precious wealth and, and minerals and, and uh, things that the country had but was being exploited by certain, uh, certain people that didn't have the interests of the country in mind. So it was very interesting that the, the, uh, the sorts of issues that the, the children were able to come up with and think about and we try to help them solve those things so essentially it was a school built in uh, built uh, built in to, uh, over 2008 and and opened in 2009 and uh, the the organization is called Skaterstan and we've grown from Kabul all over the all over the world um, a little while later, we uh, 2011, we opened in um, Cambodia, in Phnom Penh, and we, we opened a skate school there. In 2012, we opened a headquarters in, in Berlin, in Germany, where I am right now. And in um, 2013, uh, we, we, we started a project in South Africa. Uh, that then 2000, yeah, sorry, about 2014. So we're continuously growing. Um, there was also the an, another, we built another school in Afghanistan, in northern Afghanistan, that's um, two times or three times the size of the, the, the school in Kabul. And um, today, skateboarding is the largest sport for girls in the country. And uh, that's uh, that's that's something something that we're very 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 proud of. And Mazara Sharif actually has um, one of the highest concentrations of female skateboarders anywhere in the world. So there's nowhere else in the world where 800 girls come to the same spot and skateboard every week. Only in uh, Mazar Sharif in in Afghanistan. And, and right now we're building a brand new skate school in Bamyan in central Afghanistan, and that'll be our fifth fifth skate school. So that's uh, that's the that's the organisation. Um... Is there one particular story that you can tell us real quick about how your school helped turn one student's life around, how it had a positive effect on them? Yeah, I think um, I think the story of of Norzai is very very interesting because I met him on the streets of Kabul in two thousand and eight, uh, and he was going to school. He was uh, good at uh, science, like I was at school as well. He was uh, top of his class in in physics and math. I remember, and he was eleven years old, and he was a really good skateboarder. And he really wanted to continue with his uh, school, and so when we um, and uh, he, he he was able to be uh, instructor to other children um, at at that point uh, when we ran the skateboarding sessions on the on the streets. Then we opened the skater stand Kabul. Uh, he became an instructor 
while also uh, continuing his his education on the on the side. And um, when we opened in Mazar Sharif, he moved up to Mazar as a 16 year old away from his family, which was a big, uh, really big move. And uh, there he introduced uh, skateboarding and skater stands programs to well over 5,000, 6,000 youth by, by now or more. So he, he really was the, the spearhead of all of that. And today he's a, a programs manager at, at Skaterstan. He's uh, gone, he's represented Afghanistan in the Asian, uh, Asian Games. Uh, he's gone in, he's taken part in various uh, international um, skateboarding competitions. And uh, the, the future looks really bright. He went on, uh, he also, while working at Skaterstan, he, he went on to university, he got a, a law degree. Um, and uh, this, is a, this is a kid that um, I met in, in pretty, basically in rags on the street. And he was uh, carrying, when I, when I first met him, he was carrying a set of bathroom scales around his neck. And it was, uh, it was such a strange thing for me to, to see what was going on. And what he'd literally do is, is take the scales off his neck and put them on the ground and you could weigh yourself. And that was the way that he earned money on the streets of Kabul. People would pay him two or three cents to, to know their weight. And uh, that, was his, that was his job. And uh, He's, uh, he's certainly come a, a, a really, really long way and I'm really, really excited to see what the, what the future is for, for Norzo. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this commercial break from Skatistan. Which one of the 17 SDGs is the most passion for you? Which one sticks out in your mind? Yeah, I think the, the ones that um, really connect with me strongly in terms of the work that we do is um, SDG 3, uh, Good Health and Wellbeing. Um, there also, of course, SDG number four, Quality Education. That is, that's very much... Uh, within um, what I believe can really change opportunities and unlock the potential for, for humanity. Um, lack of quality education is, is something that um, holds us all back. And number five, gender equality. Um, gender equality is uh, so so important the way that we're moving forward it's going to take another hundred years at the current rate of uh, change for for there to be gender equality women are, and girls are, are left behind um, in so many so many cases and this is a, a missed opportunity for the for the whole for the whole world um, we've we've come a long way 
um, around 40 years ago, only six out of 10 girls uh, finished primary school. Um, today, nine out of 10 girls finish primary school. But the fact that one out of 10 still doesn't, that, that is a huge number around the world. And every, every, I mean, we should be aiming even much higher than just primary education uh, finishing, but that, that's an absolute minimum. And uh, by, by, by focusing really, really strongly on, on gender equality, I think we can, um, we can help, help everyone. And another one I really love is SDG 17, Partnerships for the Goals. I really believe that partnerships are the way that we're going to get to any of the, any of the goals. And without partnerships, we can't get to, to, to any of them. We've got, to, we've got to learn how we can work together, how we can prioritise the, the, the goals. And um, I, I really love finding new partnerships and new ways of working together. It's, uh, that, that's really the story of Skaterstan. A lot of very, very unlikely um, people working together in a strong way, the Afghan Olympic Committee. Skateboarding was not even an Olympic sport. It's only just becoming an Olympic sport now, yet uh, 12 years ago was, uh, they were a key partner. Um, governments embassies in, in different countries and international development actually being interested in skateboarding as a medium to, to, to achieve that. I think that that's also not a given. And uh, so I think that we, we all need each other and we need to look for uh, different ways of how we can work together. So that's why I really like that one. Well, Oliver, it was great to meet you at the Reimagine Education Conference in England. You were an inspiration to me, your company, what you were doing for other students as a teacher. It was very inspiring. Do you mind if I ask you to give up some words of encouragement or some advice or inspiration to our students? You know, we're struggling with online learning right now. And any positive uh, words that you could share with our viewers and my students, I would appreciate it. I think, I think something that um, was helpful to me was it was so important to believe in myself. If I didn't believe in myself, I wouldn't have been able to do what, um, what, I, what, I, what I did. A lot of people thought that it was a really silly idea. <laughs> And it wasn't something that could uh, help at all. I mean, last year we won the International Olympic Committee Women in Sport Award, um, a, a film about Skater Stan won an Oscar last year. <laughs> We've, there's, there's so many um, amazing successes coming from the, from the program, but nothing, it was really at the start, it was very, very important to um, believe in myself and listen, listen to yourself. There's, you've, you've got a lot of wisdom inside and you've got to do things that make sense to you, not necessarily the things that make sense to other people. And um, if, you can, if you can find out what's really important to you and that you're really passionate about, you can do really amazing things. So believe in yourself, find what you're really passionately interested in and uh, by, by applying yourself over time, you'll see amazing things uh, happen. It's such a great honor to interview a 2020 Oscar winner for short subject documentary. So would you mind telling our viewers what the name of the movie is so they can watch it as well? Yeah. So it's called Learning to Skateboard in a War Zone if you're a girl. Learning to skateboard in a war zone if you're a girl. So people search for that. It's a very long title. And <laughs> if you search for that um, on your the different channels and subscriptions that you've got, hopefully, hopefully it comes comes up. And it is it is available on uh, Amazon. I'm pretty sure. So there's you can either buy it or for, or watch it or whatever. Well, Oliver, it was a pleasure to interview you tonight. Before you leave, I wanted to congratulate you for your IOC award, the International 
Olympic Committee and for what you've done for young ladies in the profession of skateboarding. So congratulations, keep up the great work you have at all your campuses. And thank you very much for what you're doing for children in our war torn areas. Um, a real, real pleasure to share our, our stories about Skaterstan and to, to be here with you. Um, please check out www.skaterstan.org and Skaterstan is also on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook and uh, a few other, few other places as well. So look out for um, at Skaterstan, S-K-A-T-E-I-S-T-A-N. Thank you for watching this episode of 17 and Me with our guest star, Oliver Persevich from Skaterstan. If you would like to teach STGs in your classroom, or you'd just like to learn more about what STGs are, please go to teachsdgs.org. Thank you very much for being here tonight. I look forward to seeing you on our next episode of 17 and Me.